can anyone hear me or can I get a reaction or not? If I'm okay, great. I was talking before, I think no one was hearing me. So I was just saying, let's start with your daily shares with how you're feeling, how are you with the project, and your mood or everything uh, that you're feeling for this big project, our final project. So any volunteers? <laughs> Anyone who going to be the first icebreaker? Okay, Abdurrahman, thank you. Please go ahead. Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning. For the feeling side, uh, I feel kind of nervous and optimistic. Uh, the nervous because I feel like uh, still. Uh, didn't get the project 100 percent so i'm not sure about how i can implement it correctly uh but i feel optimistic because i still have the day on tomorrow so i can i can do something good uh that's all okay great hopefully your talk with yeah later will help you figure out uh of the you know the tasks of drama. Thank you for sharing. Okay, let's move on with Hilary. Good morning, everyone. Um, so, uh, okay. I'm I'm feeling echo. I don't know. It's kind of I'm feeling uh, over a little bit of a well. Uh, especially that on the agents uh, image composition and uh, yeah mostly that uh, because uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure the tools to use I'm still I'm still trying out the uh, this computer vision uh, tools like Pino and OpenCV but I'm um, getting a challenge and also I'm wondering how will the critic uh, know to evaluate, even though we were told about the knowledge base. So yeah, I'm trying to understand how the flow will work. And yeah. OK, so uh, how optimistic do you feel with all this thing? I think uh, next session with the Adwal will clear most of the things for all of you. Uh, so. How hopeful are, are you feeling, Hilary? Yeah, I'm. Um, I'm kind of optimistic. I'm. I'm uh, yeah, I feel that I can still work it out before the end of this week. So Great. yeah, yeah. So drive your questions for later. Uh, other than that, thank you for sharing, Hilary. Okay. Abraham. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. About my progress, I'm feeling uh, kind of nervous. Like I, I have some sense of the project, and I'm trying to construct some of the parts or some of the agents. But there are still some questions uh, about uh, actually how we are going to visualize the first draft. And how we are actually how how effectively that we can compose the images, but overall I'm feeling uh, good, and I hope the global decision will help us uh, help us understand the overall project or some uh, unclear parts. And uh, yeah, that's what's on my side. Okay, I hope yeah I hope it will clear things up for everyone as well. Thank you, Abraham. So, any next person who would like to share? Anyone? See your last stand up with us. So, yeah, thank you, Javis. Go ahead. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, I was morning. I was I was trying to uh, use the 
agent uh, to do the uh, image composition, but I'm having a trouble because it's a. Uh, it's, it's, I think it's easier to generate images rather than to compose them because the LLM should understand the images and also find a way to compose them. I try different function using the computer vision, the CV, but uh, it's not that much uh, uh, good. And I don't know how actually to solve that. Uh, I'm a, a little bit nervous about that. I hope uh, as... Uh, uh, my colleague said uh, maybe a bubble session will give us some clarity on that. Uh, I am optimistic. Yeah. Yeah, great. Yeah, it, it is true what you said. The composition is a bit hard than the generation. The generation is much easier. But uh, the talk will uh, hopefully will solve the problem. Okay. Um, next person. Okay, Joseph. I've seen you have raised this, so just Joseph, can you speak up? Hello, hi, I, I raised it uh, by mistake. Sorry. It's okay. Just uh, uh, you can share how you feel. How are you with the project and everything? Uh, yes. Uh, so it's uh, it's going well. Um, I'm feeling positive. I'm uh, learning a, a lot um, this week. Uh, yeah, feeling optimistic about tomorrow, uh, tomorrow's submission. Um, right now, I'm working on the documentation. Um, today, I plan to. Um, Are you ready? You... Pardon? Okay. Uh, tell me your plan. Yeah, today, I plan to have a meeting with um, a, a trainee, uh, a colleague, um, to do some, do some debugging. So that's my current progress. Okay. So are you ready also to have a session with? Okay, great. Are you ready also with the questions? That... What? Have you asked? Uh, yes, what you going to ask? Ah uh, no, I'm not yet ready with the questions. Joseph. Yes, hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, I think I think you should use. Uh, I'm asking you, are you ready with the session? Can you hear yes, me? Yes, I'm ready. Well, what session are you talking about? Hello. Hello. Who is the upper one? Queen, the Queen session. Yes, yes, I'm ready uh, for you. Hello. Hello. We have a Q&A session with the yes. upper one. Yes, yes. Um, so okay. yeah, I'll be, I'll tune in uh, for the You're Q &A session. You're ready, well. so I think there's a lag with our connection. Yeah, I think I've okay, moved. So let's move on with the next. Okay, great. Thank you, Joseph. Anyone who's going to speak up next? Johannes, go ahead. Okay, good morning, everyone. And uh, mine is not positive as the rest of them. Uh, I'm completely stuck. And don't even know where to go or even start. Uh, it was difficult for me to process everything in this couple of days. And yeah, I'm not optimistic at all. Okay, you're not optimistic yeah. at all? Uh, it's, it's difficult even to start with the project. I mean, is there anything, a little bit, at least you have idea how you can do it, this project? Uh, I'm not sure. Like, I have the overview idea how to tackle, but when I try to implement it, uh, it was difficult for me. Maybe the other session might help me. I hope so, too, yeah, Johannes. You should feel like this. So... Um... Um, yeah, thank you for sharing either way. So make sure to ask a lot of questions during your bubble session until you get it, okay? Okay, Daisy. Uh, hello, good morning, everyone. So I'm feeling a little optimistic because I think I know how to um, complete the project. Uh, yesterday I was using Pillow to 
compose the images that but something that i'm still struggling with is positioning them well so i'm still trying to figure that out and also um today i'll be working on seeing how what exactly what the critic agent will be doing yeah Hey, thank you, Desi. So you're ready with your questions, right, for Rabawa? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I hope I heard you there when you asked questions. Thank you for sharing. Yes, Abraham? Uh, yes, Daisy, could you tell us, like, what tool did you use to compose the, to generate the first image, or? Pillow. Pillow, okay. Matt and I shared a link yesterday to the documentation. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe you can share that one on the resource Slack, Daisy. The link. Okay, great. Uh, and also, you can use the demo part, the Adulio composition code. It can be on as a starter if you want as well. Okay, let's move on with the next person. We have a lot of minutes and there's a lot of people who haven't spoken. Okay, I'm gonna call out names. Deraji, if you can share your progress. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, so uh i'm feeling uh good uh but uh, still i didn't get uh i didn't get idea but i started the project but uh, when i just uh working on it it's, it is a little bit get confusion uh like uh for maybe object detection just i'm trying to use uh yellow but uh as uh, Nathanael just uh, said yesterday, it is, it is not uh, necessary. So just I'm trying to use some uh, engagement rate or others. Yeah, but I just, uh, I know the flow, but when I started working on it, I'm getting some confusion. So uh, I think the yeah, blood station is just clear for me maybe. Yeah, I am going to ask a question on that. Okay, great. So you're ready with your questions, right? Yes. Yeah, uh, great. Thank you, Dorothy, for sharing. Okay, any volunteers or should I tell again? Okay, uh, I'm gonna call out names. Someone was speaking. Okay, so I'm going. Grace, I haven't heard you before, so okay, I'll get back to you. This Grace, if you can speak up. Grace, can you hear us? Could you please share on the chat? You are not able to speak. Um, at this you can go ahead. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm uh, now. I'm trying to use the YOLO for the annotate the data, the assets. Uh, I'm trying. Uh, the name is still not, but I'm still trying on that. Uh, so how optimistic are you for finishing up? Not much because uh, we only have one day for today and tomorrow. Uh, I'm not sure I will uh, finish the whole project, but I will see. Okay. Okay. You have your questions ready for the session? Yes, yes. Okay, great. Hopefully it will work out. Thank you, Adisu, for sharing. Thank you.
Okay, so let's move. Uh, Thomas, then go ahead. Yeah, good morning, guys. So I, I, I was, I was, I, I had, I have a good understanding of the project and I'm actively trying to uh, tackle it. And so I, I, I have one question for you first. Uh, if the okay. last time the only Joe script, if we compose mm -hmm. the 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 images that that are available for uh, for one folder, if we compose it in certain in the given uh, dimension uh, pixel dimension, so does that does that satisfy it? I mean, considering the the visual aspect of it, but just composing it. Last time, I think you composed three images, right? Yeah, that that was. Uh, I think you were talking about the storyboard part. Yeah, the, the storyboard. Yeah. That yeah. So if I take the available image frames on the document and mm -hmm. laying out on the storyboard with that script something like that uh, and put in some sense is that satisfied the yeah. requirement I mean, uh, the storyboard uh, alignment and composition are different concepts you don't know that right storyboard and composition are different the storyboard just is just lining those finalized uh, final frames in some pre present presentable way storyboard is just simply just giving it like a UI presentation for displaying your final output frames that you could just use time. But the composition is a different concept. It's just creating this positioning different text patterns, whatever on your advertising idea to create a frame. Do you get the difference? Yeah, so the composition- Hello, Thomas, is... can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I can hear you. So the composition part yeah. is yeah, the composition part generating the frames that are going to be uh, aligned on the storyboard. I'm not technical generating, but exactly. Yeah, may, may you, okay. Yeah, once you do the composition part to create the frame that you want, the last step would be just presenting them on a storyboard so you can share them to the client. The storyboard is much a bit simpler. The composition part is a bit hard doing the positioning everything as you want it is a bit hard. Okay, and uh, the critic, we are uh, the critic mm -hmm. will create critic the uh, composed frames, right? Not the storyboard. Yes, the composed frames. Okay. Okay. Uh, when is the, the... But, uh, yeah, to get certain for confirmation, make sure also to ask this question with everyone as well. Yeah. At what time is the Q and I think after five minutes he will join us. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Okay, Michael. Michael, you can can if you can hear me, you can speak up. Yeah. Uh, I'm not Michael. If you are talking, I'm not hearing you. Am I audible or am I audible? Can I get up? Okay. Let's move on to Dangetacho. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Okay, uh, I just, uh, I'm just wondering uh, to ask for those who are trying to work on this project. So how are you going, are, how are you guys going to get the knowledge base for the critics? Uh, how are you approaching 
Xenology uh, uh, or that you, we are supposed to use for critics. This is uh, just my question. For those who, uh, who have progress on this uh, challenge. So another thing. Anyone who tackled this part of the task uh, or has a final idea, you can raise it, share it with Getacho. Uh, what was the question? Get I'm sorry. Get okay. My question. Is, okay. My question is: uh, the critic agent uh, need uh, knowledge is uh, for criticizing the uh, composed images. So, uh, how are we going to get the knowledge is for the critic agent? Uh, yes, I have asked uh, Mr. Abbaal yesterday the exact same question, and he he explained it in in a way we can have uh, our own type of uh, knowledge base. The first one could be like uh, some base practice out there that we can find from the internet, and we could chunk them or we could uh, we could store them as a knowledge base, so that the the, the generated image will be buried against this and get a feedback or a, or a ranking. The other one is uh, to use the data that's provided by by the uh, by the Adulido team that is uh, on the instance. Uh, some of the ads have like uh, some of the ads have like a high CPR and uh, what were the other metrics? Uh, those ads means uh, means they have a good composition and we can use this uh, object understanding or we can use our uh, agents to. To, to to assess those ads and uh, get the best uh, composition or the best uh, alignment or layouts knowledge into uh, our database or our uh, JSON and text file, and then we can use that to uh, to to evaluate our uh, generated uh, generated uh, frames. Uh, that would that I think that's how he responded to it. Seven. Okay, uh, that way I was uh, thinking uh, we were trying to discuss yesterday in the evening too. Uh, we should we should have we should generate our knowledge base uh, from the documents that have been shared and they have good engagement rates and uh, some other criteria so we can use them as a, an a ground to lose, but my question, my second question on this is how are we going to uh, get these uh, matrices from these uh, images that have been shared? Are, do you uh, have ha, has anyone tried to use some Python scripts to get uh, a file uh, to extract files from images or uh, who uh, have progressed? Maybe I will be happy if uh, some of you can share. How are we going to get these uh, matrices from the shared uh, image? Uh, yes, Hilary. <clears throat> yeah, on Gitatu's question, uh, if I get got it right, uh, is like you want to you want to get a, to load the images from the assets folder and. Uh, you maybe use them or analyze them. I, if that is the case, uh, there was the notebook shared the other day by uh, on Tuesday, I think, with, for CV algorithms. You can use Pilo, and then you can go ahead and analyze them using uh, like Tesseract. By Tesseract, you can analyze the images from text from the images. But loading them, you can use Pilo. And I'm sure that's the case if we are questioned. Yeah. Was that a full get at you? That seems uh, I will go through it and uh, I will come up with other questions if I have. Okay, Jarvis. I just want to add on more uh, on Gitacho's question because uh, maybe we can extract some things from the images that have uh, better engagements. Uh, but uh, what is actually is the metrics to be a good uh, uh, advertising? You know, it, uh, is that is not is that? I think it's a, it's kind of subjective somehow. How do you 
I have a metrics for saying that this is a good advertising and how do you use that to maybe critic another advertising that we compose. So that's what my question. So uh, again, again, I haven't maybe uh, uh, heard Gitacho's question. Maybe uh, he can so repeat maybe this, what, yeah. Yeah, maybe what's... Gitacho, if you can repeat the question. Okay. Uh, if you can hear me, uh, I can repeat. Yeah, we, can, we can hear it. I can hear it. Yeah. Okay. So I, my question was, my first question was, uh, we uh, sub, we supposed to use uh, critics agents to to have uh, a better uh, frames of storyboard. So how are we going to get the knowledge base for uh, these critics? I have uh, my uh, friends suggest and I was thinking that we can we can use uh, the, the asset folders which uh, have better engagement and uh, which have uh, a better uh, view and we can just maybe we can get uh, some insights from that we can use that as a knowledge base for our critics so my question is uh, how, uh, is, uh, is there an easy way to extract these criteria or matrices from the given asset folder so uh, if you yeah. Can... yeah so that's good and that's why i think hillary was referring to tesseract and others right as far as i understand yeah 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 so i think that's that's exactly you know so there are million ways if you refer how to make analysis of um, an image you know or a combination a layer so normally any any image uh, that is not taken so if a photograph takes it for example what happens is lights you know light reflected from each of whatever uh, objects will come and then on the camera it gets basically rendered right um, and normally we are unable to unless we use a special technique we are unable to separate them in terms of layer but you always can think of them as each object live in their own layer and then they got combined so in photoshop and others that's what normal um, people who design would do right they just they create masks they create this they create this layer that layer takes layer this layer and then they form a combination of them so if you could distinguish how you know that layer the relationship between objects then that means you are learning so that means the from existing layer combinations you will be able to learn what are the usual placements you know what comes you know, of course there are many factors so that's why it's much more harder if you are just learning a rule the very first thing you do is just first identify objects and their locations and maybe refer by them like as a coordinate it might not be fine-grained but you might really decompose for example a space into let's say a checker you know like some form of you know grid of uh, let's say one unit is on the height and uh, let's say width and h so delta w and delta h would be like the size that you decompose and within that frame depending on you know so if, if delta h is if the delta w for example the the division along the width for example if it is very fine you will generate a lot of them right so the, the key is that let's imagine that you try to place the center mass or the center point of that object within uh, for each object and then you might learn the relationship between different categories now you label every object in the form of like let's say this is a logo this is a text this is a text on something this is a text let's say this is a call to action this is uh, a background and the background of course just the centered around normally um but you might have a combination of two backgrounds or or that so then you label you classify every object that you might find and you you put them like in terms of their center and the size of them and then simply once you have when once you know where they are you try to train something that just learns i mean it's not it's one algorithm i'm just saying 
is that you learn where to place. Of course, you need lots of parameters because if you can imagine, one object has already, you know, a center mass, which is two vector, you know, um, uh, coordinates, two, two points, and then the width is of that. Like if it is square, if it's not square, of course, you have to have like some bounding box. So you can imagine it's a lot of parameters, but let's imagine that you can do that and then you will, you will learn this parameter, what is a best, you know, uh, model that will predict, given every other object, it will predict this object. So that means you can construct it. So the very first thing I think the knowledge base is extracting just locations and their relationships. If you want to do it semantically, for example, you want to do it, one algorithm would be instead of doing that, you might say, okay, I'm gonna, exp I want to ask LLM to, ex to describe it for me. I will give it first using, you know, some object identifier, YOLO and others. I would identify each object and I will tell it, okay, here these objects exist and tell me the relationship between them and, and also the colors and others. And then let's imagine you create paragraph of like for each object, for each frame or for each, I think you have a paragraph, right? The LLM writes, this object was placed along this and the uh, color, you know, whatever was this and that and that. And then you create for every frame class for every, or maybe a thing, you create all of that. And this could be your knowledge base. And next, what you're saying is that, okay, I have these objects and I wanna place them. So then you ask the, the LLM back, you know, I, these are good examples or, you know, my, the, the objects I have, the items are close to this one. So that's a rug, like you, you, you extract. And then you ask it, what is, you know, uh, how can, like, tell me how to place them or give me coordinates. So that one is, so Johannes is, we have to label the image. I mean, you have to identify that's YOLO plus Tesseract plus others is, that's exactly what you're using, I think, to identify the elements. So, and there are, this is two algorithms I just mentioned, right? But other simple rules, just a simple rule would be, like, okay, I am gonna really put log logos normally. I would just only determine how often logos come up. How often, you know, my grounds are, I mean, if I label only just, if, if I label things, for example, if I have items and I label them as background and that, so that's the first step. Then after that, I have a pre, like a template, you know, I have prepared a template just because logos will be up, backgrounds are this, and that so i'm just going to select the template and that will make me and so all i do is now creating maybe manual templates and just then after creating the manual templates i will adjust them so that's another one so you could you could could think of it but the very first is sense in all of them is first is to label identify them and second is to be able to use the data that uh, you have like um, the examples that you have and for that you can have many other objects even from the internet you would be able to learn by just selecting right so there, there might be um any good ads ad databases that you can find you can use them as well but that's computationally sometimes this is sufficient so it's a prototype that you are building and earlier i think japes was asking how do you the performance data i would say the performance data later you can fine tune like you can fine tune one fine tuning is to select if I have multiple strategy to select which strategies for whichever, you know, ads are like, ads have not only these elements in the, in the frame, but also combination between, for example, an ad that contains a video, an ad that is long animation or many frames, an ad that are shorter frames, then you can distinguish, you know, what form of combination um, uh, would be suitable you know, that maximizes, for example, for CTR, because CTR means somebody must arrive on CTR. And one, what form for engagement? So that means, you know, maybe a lot of it, the engagement, you might say, is influenced by the text you write and then the animation type. So, you know, you would be able to say like, you would be able to find those elements using, using your performance. But at first level, the very, very, very first level is just to compose objects, even without thinking, to just aesthetically, let's say grade, grade one is to aesthetically at least 
find a you know a method an algorithm that aesthetically places them and second is from aesthetics to go to performance so in that performance you can use like even just that fine tuning you know should i shift it slightly or create a hue you know you, you can adjust the you can fine tune your orders such that you maximize you know from a single an aesthetic aspect of it and also you have to know every model will not give you one single part i mean it, it's like for example the llm if you ask it to generate five types it will generate five orders now you can select for each order you can select which order looks like ads that have a higher engagement right so then you can use the performance data to select from the alternatives so that could be one okay um johannes okay <clears throat> uh, before i ask my main question when you say the yolo identify the objectives uh what do you mean by that like what is the objectives so the in in your ad like just the actual ad the frames there is it's already a combination right so you know the objects like that means you may have the assets themselves but you don't know when they are placed together you don't know what they are what is where so are we identifying from the final ad frame those elements yes and then you know what they are because you you if you already have all the assets you know what each assets are from their label but the objects themselves you use your law and others to identify and then you learn from them how they are placed right the, you know the you know which which for example the engagement the, the cta for example does it come in the bottom in the middle is it you know what what, what kind of it, it like like that so you would be able to the location of it so if you identify you get the location where they are okay uh but yolo uh maybe i'm not sure how we can use the yolo but if you give the final frame to the yolo i don't think uh, it's capable of identifying which one is the logo, which one is the CTA. And in order to do that, you have to train that model. I mean, why not? YOLO normally does that. Of course, you might say, I mean, uh, the objects we have are not part of the classes, but otherwise, you they can identify where the faces are, where objects are. Yeah, they can, but uh, like uh, to identify the logo or uh, the CTA, they are so similar. I don't think YOLO can identify that. I think in the past, people for have example, identified. Uh -huh. For example, if the object is like a clear, like a dog, a car, like something like that, YOLO is capable of identifying those. But in the art frame, I don't think it's it can identify like for example uh, how can it can differentiate which one is title which one is uh, cta uh, which one is the logo they are so similar uh, for the yolo to uh, differentiate them. um yeah that line okay uh be honest um, the, the, the approach we suggested actually works so maybe uh, try to find another approach other than what you are trying to do now so like for example try to detect the specific objects and also you might need to train uh, your your law model so for example it can actually detect text and also it, it can actually locate an image so now you locate an image use from so you have an asset and you have an in the frame. So you can locate that specific asset from the in the frame. So you all can do that. So is that what what uh, Johannes is saying is so you have an object, you know what is local. But 
you don't know what uh, you know where you know, for example you identify a logo object and how do you know it's a logo i think that you know one easy method that I, I can think of just now quickly is each of the items if you distinguish them and label them you know so that that means the logo object you have so you give that one to your logo and you know what it is and later when that is distinguished when that text is for example distinguished you will know it's a logo so because you have the each assets that is one methodology that you could actually then you, you know on each of the assets you distinguish them that means on the layers and then you also distinguish it on the final combination and by then aligning you will know what is what so that's one very quick way one can do uh yeah Johannes, and then japes and uh, michael and japes okay yes uh i think the last thing you said just is, is i think the right way but uh in order to do that that means we have to label our data right this one is the logo this one is uh the ct manually that, that, that one the file name tells you okay and uh, the yolo module will understand that maybe no no i mean so the from the file name you know what is logo and stuff and from that logo you you would uh, use logo uh, you would use yolo to identify what is it what is inside it and later when that is identified you will know that's logo okay yeah okay uh, michael can you hear me yeah so in the folder the there is only what well, it, it says only logo all the other assets all the other assets the naming is not uh, compatible with the category so mm -hmm. either we rename we should rename all the yeah. assets or if that is the case yeah so if they don't if they didn't really write what is it uh, at least in terms of uh i think is it in the background or not if they are not so if maybe that it's also their assets are a combination if it's a combination i would say you would still say like this in a form you would be able to you would be able to use their own labeling so if, if it's a lot of data you will be able to use their own labeling say like in that let's say the first card i don't know what the file names um, they are but some of them end card or others right they might have that that name is that the case yeah it, it says uh, in in cta in the pg uh in the frame yeah. so i mean so when whenever already says it in the cta it means of course we know what it is when it is cta and others but so are there no are there no such distinctions in all of them or is it just uh that some don't have that kind of name uh, some don't have that name but most of okay. them have so in case, yeah, I, would, I would imagine you might need you might need okay so i think that's what's called you know bad engineering right so the, in principle if they were good they would have used you know names that are consistent but in this case they basically were just naming maybe by hand so you you may need to uniformize yeah michael so i i hope that your question is then yeah i you might need to uniformize by relabeling the names okay japes Okay, I, I had a problem like Johanna said to try identify some of the parts of the image using YOLO, but I tried OpenAI uh, uh, vision capability and it's actually properly identifies the objects and it tells me yeah. what the picture is and where the objects are. And I think it's a good, especially for using on the uh, as an agent because it can uh, talk to another agent and describe the image so that in another modification can happen and i think maybe open ai vision capability could be another but the, the, the only the only difference is yeah one is you are it's cheap and the other one is expensive so of course i would have suggested everything to use other um, image like the ones that you you can pay 
and in principle, definitely they are capable, right? They are very good, but it's just cost-wise. Yeah, for I mean, I would say do it, but you have to. I mean, testing YOLO and others is also a good way to know what should be delegated to YOLO stuff and what should be to the image. But I agree. I mean, I think they they are good. I mean, we will be. You can do a lot more. By, you don't need even just to identify that. I mean, just a good prompt would give you a lot more information that is just directly cut across. So you don't have to do um, even a step, a step by step. You can actually distinguish what is logo and tell me what's in the logo, where it's placed, and jet, and you know, tell me for each object that is out there. You know, some. A critic as well. What you know? What what makes it good? What makes it place there? You know, you could do a story on that image based on a prompt. So yes, it's true. LLMs or LLMs with image capability would give you, I mean, a lot more. And you you may use also um, other models, open source models. Of course, you don't have GPU. Maybe that's why that's that. But Others also like, um, you know, like DALI is paid, but there are open source uh, large image models you could use as well. But again, you don't have time. So whatever that makes, a lot more of it is you have to know. First is to try to get at least one thing right, which is good. It will make you, you complete something and you have learned something. And the other one is to understand, to have thought through so that later if some, you know, if you are discussing or if you have a chance to do it again, you have a lot of, you have written a lot of to-dos, you know, things that you, if you had time, you would do. And you have written that as well. So, yeah, true. Okay, Abraham? Oh, yes, thank you. So, how do you suggest we should uh, draft the very first uh, frame, like, um, for the critics, give some feedback to the image? So, I mean, in principle, one can share. So, if they, if you get, you know, one easy way. Normally, I should not be the one telling. By now, you should be really thinking. Okay, if I'm using a OpenAI and everyone is using the same data, maybe that we should share each other the the uh, the results of the OpenAI, right? So that means that I would be analyzing each frame maybe, and then I want everyone to not analyze it again, and unless they really don't think it's good, and you can share. If, you, if that is the knowledge base is there, you could actually reduce cost. That means you can pool your resources and use them efficiently. But uh, the critic is really, for now, I think if you establish, let's imagine everything is done well, and the critic, uh, the first step of it is it, it analyzes the objects, like whatever object is given to it, it analyzes, and it is providing corrections in the term in terms of, like let's say the placement, the logo should be down to a position of X, um, and the thing should be shifted to the left or by whatever amount. So if the critic is much more, you know and rationally for each of them. Like, for example, just as AI function, each each operation like that, or not AI function, maybe just as the JSON, at least is for every, the JSON would contain, you know, for every item, um, it would provide, if it needs correction, if it needs correction, the correction to apply, and the rationale why that is the case, and what is expected, right, when we do it. And then that means for each item, it would give that kind of, some correction um, element. So, and then you can use that one such that the composer can actually take that one and correct. So, because it's super well defined already, so then it knows how to, what to do. You know, so the coordinated shifts. Maybe even if you want to make it even more clear, you do exactly another thing that just say. You you would it gives you operation it is it's to you know right or left or add or subtract or flip and some and then the positions or the basic the argument so if you imagine that every there are functions that takes this one the name of the object 
and the operation and the you know the operation parameters then it will basically you will then list through and then apply that correction and that way you can iterate so if it's ai function then you just it becomes like between the critique and the corrector it becomes a back and forth until everything is good right so that's one let's say a very straightforward implementation does that make sense abraham uh, yes it does okay. but like uh, on the very first like uh, like what should take the i thought like we'd give it some a very mm -hmm. drop of a frame uh, we'll give it a my question is like what does it take uh, i think the critic takes an add frame as a parameter right yes add frame and the knowledge base is you it's uh, you know so the add frame is more of think of it as a query and then the rag the retrieval you retrieve and you get what is good what you know what is the equivalent for that for that query is a context and then from that context you generate a correction uh, yes yes but like uh, first we have to uh, generate an initial draft or should we pass the elements of in, course that's uh, no, no that's critic. that's what so the initial draft is basically the the general like the composer so the critic only critics after the composer and the composer provides the the initial draft right? uh, yeah so like uh, how do you suggest like uh, we, we we first develop our uh, initial draft you, like you can just draft. you can just place it from a template so logos are up you know just a very simple template I mean, you can do some sophisticated one or a very simple you know manual that if you have already a manual something you use the manual and then after that the critic would correct so normally it's this is called i don't know if you have heard this a monte carlo approach so this is not a monte carlo so this is actually a, um you you would start from the very first a good if you start from a good place then the number of steps that you need are smaller if you start from a very bad place then of course you would really you would take long time to get there so if your initial point is good just like any gradient method then you know then it would be like the gradient that you apply to arrive at to an acceptable level is the number of steps are smaller so you are basically using llm to do gradient for you in this space Oh, yes, and we can take the concepts as an input to generate the fir very first ad. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I mean, you can you can use the concepts as context, and the composer. Depending on the composer's algorithm, it can it may use if it's just a you know a manual, some model, just that just really only doesn't depend on a concept. It, it you might not use it, but other composers might use effectively efficiently the concept uh, to, to synthesize the first one so if you use the llm definitely yes you will use the context because the context if you use other algorithms you might want to translate that you know if you use just some other thing for example you might need to translate that co the concept because the context is written in a language in a natural language you have to translate that into some location and placement type Right. So depending on the algorithm, you may you may be able or not. But yeah, if you use the concept, that's that's good. But you might not have. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's clear, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. And get that Okay. okay. Uh, I just want uh, to uh, e explain what I have understood in the just uh, for confirmation or something like that. When we say that uh, YOLO can understood which one is the logo and which one is the CTA and something like that, are we going to uh, to give these components each uh, for the uh, YOLO and train the model, uh, the logo no. uh, and the CTA or something? Okay. No. Okay, well, so more, you would, 
you would identify from, let's say from the logo image, you would identify what is inside it. So you use log your law to identify what's inside. If it's a text, it gives you a text that says uh, Nike. And if it's an image, it says a shoe or um, uh, an icon, which is the the right, like some right tick. Mm -hmm. And so now you know what a logo is. So next, when it's when it is defined, when you now from the whole image, when there is a text. Okay, so, uh, okay, yeah. so uh, we are going to teach the uh, some model that uh, so we is using uh, some logos in some CTS and some other components uh, before we are going to use it. Is I that mean, the train, way? You don't need you, you don't need to train. I mean, YOLO already uh, just the model can identify objects, right? and texts so no training i mean inference okay. it's only inference so if we distinguish between inference and training you are inferring so that means you are inferring from the actual logo asset as well as then when you infer something similar from the whole image you will know that's logo so it's you infer one type from the logo and you infer it if you infer the same thing then in the whole image you know, you know that is a lot. Okay, so uh, so if I am going to work on, let's say, an X folder, so before I give all the landing page or the frame, I, I should give it the logo so that it, it can know when when I, I am going to give it the landing frame. Yeah? Exactly. You, you, you first process all of the assets, the individual assets, and you keep what is inside inside them okay okay that's uh, that, okay that was my uh, my idea what, what what i want to say okay yes. i'm done with this so uh, uh, uh if uh, uh, i have one request i'm not yeah. sure if uh, uh, you uh, the team and other trainees are okay with it or not but uh, uh, i'm not sure about all of the other trainees but uh, some of us are getting the the ideas these days uh, and it's late so yeah. if uh, the team can give us some um, two or three days to go for uh, maybe up to wednesday maybe we can uh, do a better thing uh, other than submitting tomorrow i mean we will discuss on that i mean the most important part that we need to finalize things you know this is the last week so i mean definitely we will be happy but let's say we'll come back to you today and okay um, yeah okay good okay hilary <laughs> okay uh, so to add on on the last question the, the when you use your law i i saw that there's a it, it has coco i don't it was trained on coco data set which has 90 90 names so if you say you detect something it it will only fall under the 90 like let's say a dog or banana an apple but it doesn't have something like logo and logo can be just made up of words and something so i think the the, the initial approach but is, what about is, can, can it can, 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 it, can, can it, it not just can, just a question just for can, can it distinguish texts and uh icons and let's say human faces um it uh, if you go to classification uh yeah it can can now take the car and then identify models of the car like uh, sedan and sports car but uh if it is text i i think uh that one i may go with by the by tesseract like first i identify i take an image that the, the logo uh image file and then i get a text and then i i i keep in mind that this is this text will always be in log and then when i'm critiquing i will look for that text that's what i had as an idea to to identify the uh, objects because if it is a text i think yellow won't work to identify the um it will just know it there's a text but 
you know, you have, you have a specific text for the logo. No, so the, I think and then use the appropriate tool for the appropriate. So in that case, that's the wisdom shared. Yeah, let's use Tesseract uh, for that. So because it you, you, you need the text themselves. So or other appropriate tools to be able to get. So for example, if icons are not well identified and if there are many icons, maybe I can detect another, you know, maybe in the Python CV, you might find something. So I think, yeah, using, exploring that and using the appropriate tools such that, you know, you combine these methodologies and you get a good result is good. But as I said, in the absence of uh, also this experimentation in time, you may, depending on your resources, you may use just open AI um, image just to at least verify your methodology if it works or not and um, if the algorithm you are using if it is actually good or not so um, yeah oh, okay. yeah uh, so on the same note of open ai the, the, uh, so i was asking I, I was asking if we could have if you are to if you are allowed to use the tier vision uh, for vision um but as I've gotten now, is is that I think you want us to explore the computer vision algorithms, and then maybe just in a in a case that to evaluate uh, just to assist uh, if it is evaluating correctly. So I, I think that's I mean, what you. So mean. Like, you know, I, I, so have, like, I have I have two interests. I have, I have two interests. Maybe I think there's echo from you, Hilary. So. One interest is for you to get a good result so that you know how it's done, right? Like it, it is independent of the matter. So if you were in the in Abludio, and if you get first, you know, sometimes they want quick results, and if you use it, open AI, and they're fine. So that's one interest. The other interest is that you have also some other companies are not that um, rich; they really can't do a lot more. Um, and they, they have many, many images to do the same, and they don't have that much. So the cost, they it's their, their interest. And therefore, they would really want to hire you because you are good at, you know, combining different methodologies to do the same thing. So I would say it is those two interests, in, you know, um, playing. So I would say do what makes sense and do what is, what do you think is like, if one is getting very, then, for example, the cost reduction is becoming uh, taking you time, and you know maybe just you can uh, speed up things by by using the APIs. And not only there is only you know OpenAI, but even just image at Abludio in the first time actually we were using a lot more uh, AWS image uh, analysis. So, but let's say it's think of these two and then argue why later you know in your report your for yourself you know just almost always argue that I, I don't have time and i wish that i could do that but now um, given my plan right now it's three days whatever left and therefore i want to do i want to use this one but this was a promising and i will in the future i will do that something like that so i think i would say take that So that's why we give you a little bit of freedom to do to decide based on that. But having cost reduction as a second parameter is a very good thing. Yeah, Hilary. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll ex I will explore the, the other non cost reduction. So on the cut, there's a file cut called categories.txe. It has, I think, you know, categories. But, uh, yeah okay on the on that that's file I was um, is that asset categories I, or verticals no no there's a there's a categories txt i don't i i just extract them it has 23 like categories background image logos tier button so um, i'm thinking that i will call them labels like if i want to train maybe now my yolo uh i'll go to them to identify from the images I give to classify, or yeah, to classify among them. And I say, if you get this uh, image, it has this, you label it as logo. 
and so on or uh, or what was the use case for it that that's what i built yeah I, I think it's just to give you levels you know earlier as i was saying the assets name you know the different assets that are involved so you will use it in your analysis and your composition if you do manual for example you will use that one you know you will label every asset whatever you distinguish to be one of them and then you have a location to put a preference location relationship between them so you are basically you know that gives you the label so earlier i was mentioning about that like just you can you can have a category of assets to use it everywhere later even for the language of the llm when it explains it should be using only that for example say it should name by name what they are according to that category and then also the relationship it should tell you according to that category so you could use it as uh, as the vocabulary yeah Hillary? okay so uh, on on now the rug the you mentioned something about rug on critique region gets a frame and frame as like query we 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 get the I don't know, we, we retrieve the concepts from the, let's say, concepts JSON. So, but when I look at the concepts JSON file, um, it only has, like, you can't identify what concept. No, so I think there, there are two, there are two, I think there's a mistake, mistake. So when I think of, so when I was saying about rank, it is on the knowledge base, not on the concept, right? So the, the concept is to help you, the constructor construct, right? Or the, the composer to compose, to give it a guidance. But the rag part is more, once you build a knowledge base of relationships or on a frame, then if you now give a frame, then, you know, you, you would be able to know, it's like, okay, you know, more the assets are now the, let's imagine the vocabularies are the assets. You know, how many assets are there and, and what assets now with those assets being the query you would now go and any uh, previous frame that contains similar assets and that gives you you know so it's the and it's the the knowledge base for the rag is not the concept uh, json it's the knowledge base of that you constructed yourself from combining okay yeah any question yeah again Hillary. yeah yeah so again now okay again on the concept so like uh, i've understood that maybe it's for the guide of the composition to generate based on this but there's uh there's the performance with uh etr and uh oh, et and ctr so those ones i will i thought they were to be used for critiquing like if you use this approach, you'll get a low click-through click, click rate, so maybe refine it. I, I thought that was the case. But now to identify that one, we have to we have the process. Explain. Explain. So, so, I did, so I did. Again, I think you, you guys are a lot more focusing on two labels. First label is really getting composition right. That means aesthetical aspect and a story wise, right? So the very first thing any designer do doesn't care about like whether it's going to perform well or not. At first, they just create a story. The story is also the story was created using the performance data. You know, you have to know that the story contains inside it. When you generate a, a story, you actually generated the story based on, you know, the previous data that performed well. And you know, so you you generated those stories. So actually, the story contains performance, and the story is also what keep what gives you what makes it very different from another asset, right? Because here you are creating a story. Asset composition might be you know you might learn about it, but the story it sets the scene. You know, like it's it's the trade, like the story trade that everything every assets kind of are composed around and the story itself when it was generated it had actually a performance data because which story what kind of story 
you know, if you were the one to generate that story, you would know you had to use, you had to give it, you had to learn the other one too. Like performance should have come also there. Yeah, Hillary. Okay, so, okay, let's say I have my story I'm creating. And uh, based on that story, I have to com compose the different assets a certain way to make the story. Now on the evaluation, I don't have any metrics because it's a new story. Uh, I was thinking uh, the evaluation now, because we, we have to see aesthetics and uh, you know those those things. Now to evaluate those one, human will do that. But if I, I think LLM would be the one to intelligent enough to assess the the we uh, the the different elements of design or what. How, what would you suggest? Or uh, so, should we write, a, write so, another algorithm yeah. to yeah. to say that if... No, no, I think, I think, I think you are uh, overthinking uh, it. Yeah. I think you it's the, the, just already by the composition and by the critic, is the critic is just there to make sure because whatever you do, you don't know if you are not overlapping something. You don't know if the colors, now, even if the assets, their logo, but the color of the logo is very different from the color, you know. So the critic just should really deal with this only. Forget, forget like the performance now. I think that's the second step. That's what I'm saying. Level one, level two. And level one, like the, the composer is really about just making sure, ensuring that you have an actually, when a human looks at it, they would know that it is not about performance. It's about just, it makes sense right so colors are smooth things are that and that one you learn by the critic the critic of course learning from existing ones it would guide that you know it will evaluate and critic and then let's imagine you generate that i think you can already stop there that's that's the hardest problem and then after that if you have multiple algorithms multiple you know like multiple assets multiple way of generating then you might use now the performance data to be able to select but i would say i think that's confusing a lot of people already it is the most the hardest part is not you know as i said the performance data is already in the story so you should worry less about how the performance data would would create but more can you compose something nice based on the story can you compose something nice that that is a base let's say if you crack that the next step is very easy yeah let's finish with Hilary and I'll come to Dereji uh, was that Dereji at yeah okay one well, last thing on that note is that okay I I on the last question I was focusing on performance now I was talking that now the, the critique is the one to evaluate but how will it know that it's pleasing? So unless I use it, uh, I was thinking of LLM, LLM will be the one. To, you you yeah, tell it that yeah, it will tell you that the colors, yeah, not, yeah. So, but if there's a cost, uh, I don't think there's another option that is less costlier than using LLM. I, I think for uh, now, I was let's explore for another now, plan. Let's explore for for now, let's use for that one. Let's use LLM because it's a text uh, generation. So you know, a lot more you are generating a text. As I said, a JSON that probably the critic that just how to modify, right? So let the LLM be the gradient. So yeah, I agree. So I, I misunderstood your question. So the the point is for that one. I think that's a natural algorithm. So and it's also cost wise, it is not image. So texts are much cheaper, so we can argue with that. Okay, is that is that all? Like, do you have clarity, Hilary? Yeah, no, it's clear. It was the critique that I was worried about. Uh, yeah, so my understanding will be just to, to we we analyze as usual, like by Tesseract to, to do text and get the colors and pass those to LLM, like, in a JSON format or something, and then it will return to us the the positioning, how we can modify it. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Was there another hand? Was it J or someone else?
derece. Derece you can unmute. If you are speaking, unfortunately, we can't hear you. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Is is it clear for everyone? And I'm I'm happy. Either the questions already demonstrate you guys are really thinking high level. That's really I mean low level in that sense, but high level means more really good. So I am I'm happy to see that. So yeah, I hope I hope you have grasped it and it's good challenge. And you will face this type of problems in many many places. Many companies they want to do one way of that, but right? Either they want to generate a story, or they want to generate this, they want to generate that, or they want to do this, they want to cost minimize, but then they want to do quality, you know. So these problems are real. And and this is, if you do something good, Arnudio would be very happy to. So, yeah. Um, I, Johannes, absolutely. You, we, you know, if you find another agent that really suitable, I, you know, we are here not as experts that knows that what is best but only making it clear for you to start but if you find something useful i would be saying to go for it so um so know that this is for everyone as well we are just only providing initials so that you can start something but then it's up to you um, to continue okay japanese and then direct Okay, I think previously you said that uh, should we have a feedback loop after the critic uh, to modify the uh, image yes. or the composite? In, in principle, that would be exactly why you are critiquing it, hopefully, that you will be able to correct it. So if, if you implement it as an agent in an agent sense, it can even apply that automatically until it terminates. So in the determination, you either say it's to say like acceptable level, then it terminates, or when it's um, you know when it's actually exceeds some some number of iteration. But yes, the critic it would be nice the critic to be used independently, as well as also together with the composer to form you know as a feedback loop. But, Whichever you implement, that would be good. Even if you just implement just the critic and that, and you demonstrate that, that is depending on the time, that's sufficient. But if you can do, if you have time and implement it that way, that is good. Okay, great. Dereje? Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, so yeah, I need confirmation for, for what I'm understanding. So, just I said I didn't use YOLO uh, because uh, I think the aim of YOLO is just uh, to identify position and the object in, in a frame, right? Mm. Yes. So yeah, I used the uh, I used the uh, intern code so on Google Colab, and then after that, so uh, then I extract. Uh, this text uh, using the uh, OCR from OCR, and then just uh, so just like I have three things. For example, I can extract text from asset, and also just I know the position of uh, uh, this asset or the position of logo. For example, then when uh, just now I have three things. So when I give to when I give to asset, so just I'm going to generate a add frame site. Hello. I'm I'm not sure if it's from my side or your side. You're breaking. Okay, can you hear me now? Maybe. Maybe yeah. my Can my you, connection. Is that just did, did you did you Maybe is that just me or others? Was it breaking? Because sometimes my internet also. Um, so, okay. So maybe just, 
go directly. Let, let, right? So you're saying your law is doing for object detection and position. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, uh, I used other methods. So and for for this purpose, and also just uh, I used the OCR for just text extraction. But sometimes it works good, but sometimes it is not good. So let's say I have three things. For for example, text extracted from the asset or from yeah from the frame and uh, the position and also maybe the colors. So when I give to this, when I give these three things to this asset, so it can generate the uh, add frames, right? Yeah, it does. I mean, yeah, I think starting from simple and com making it complex is fine too. Yes, it does. So, okay. Then, then after that, so, so my question is so how how we are going to just compose after these steps so now now you have so there are two things you do right one is analysis uh the analysis part is you are learning what is good right so you are composing um um so i'm just more reading like so I will, I will get back to that so so the the first part is you are analyzing you are just you have you know frames that are good like from an actual advertisement and you are basically learning you know what constitutes you know how objects you know what objects are there and how they are relating you know in as much detail as you can right so one is that one so that means positions of logos are here positions of whatever are there and there and there and there and then the next aspect is now you have assets that are needs to be composed you can use different algorithms as i was discussing earlier you can use different algorithms to say okay i have these items and i might be composing them like the one you know let's label them one two three four the previous ones you analyze like number four or my like number two. So that's called a simple method, right? Or you might be saying like, okay, I am gonna construct an agent that really uses critic and an agent that would be like one is analyzing whether, you know, um, that uses like the LLM to say what is good because what is good is composed. And then I am giving it some assets and how I plan to compose it. And then it takes that one and then it criticizes me like okay now if you do that you know yes uh, uh, well it will not work because some things will be overlapped or you know this that that instead do this move this one uh, certain amounts change the color of that certain amount now for each of these feedbacks you have probably a python function that applies this feedback and then after that you then update okay i have done this now and then the critic says okay you know um that's good and well done congratulations or might say no still some things are not good you should be correcting this and then that way you you compose and analyze together so and the analysis becomes the critic so the analysis in its own first you were using it for for constructing your knowledge base does that okay. does that make sense Derek? Yes, yes. So for, for analytics tag, so can I use the uh, LLM that was below yeah, any other? Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. Let's use the LLM more for those more complex analysis because we are building ranks. And, and I think because LLMs can provide JSON, as long as you construct a language that, you know, edits, you know, image edits as in the form of a JSON. You know how how you edit and how you place maybe you know how you define colors how you define so if you define a protocol that you provide your you know what you plan to do to the llm and the llm gives you how to correct it with, without even any editing except uh, for editing you would need it just so that you know whether your functions are applying or not but even without any 
you know image manipulation you can actually find the final uh, you can construct the final things that you apply on those assets because yeah so that's you know if you think of it every image editor it's similar right it 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 performs some protocol when you are doing i don't know fudging or this thing or that moving it's basically some it's either using a python function but you can imagine in a lazy computation sense it stores everything as um you know you have seen it especially in the uh redash where any operation including graph plotting or dashboard whatever can be defined by just a yaml file and here any operation all sets of operations that you can apply on a given asset can be defined by a certain set of json you know and then you can apply that so yeah great i think there are questions if we use yolo to identify object position given one image from the assets having three people and three cars from the image in the frame yeah i think so again this is much more of depends on our algorithm if you are just only the language your vocabulary is just asset names i think that's fine but if you want to do a lot more uh, detail for example on the colors you know what it means on the meaning especially on the llm for it to use you can describe each asset also based on their name and also what they mean so that it can be actually more aware what it is or it can infer it itself as well but if you are just giving it an image you know without the image we, we are assuming in the agents when they interact they much more describe the image themselves but not really provide the image and therefore for that reason if you had a, if you have a more description of the image first that means assets first it's actually better because then the llm would know you know which can be common slightly better way so that would be i think that addresses um yeah so colors image it's as you complicated you can really imagine to support much more so for now just like anything start from the simplest maybe just positions but then add you will add in the next iteration when you have time for example you will add color and then later hues you know so that's called your how your if you just think of it as your algorithm or your package you can say i support this i support that i support that so you expand your support as we go so that becomes modular so for now just the image can be sufficient but over time you can really work on modules that support different elements yeah hilary okay so let's say the concepts json is a suggestion on how we can come up with with our concept frame and the frame uh, so if that is the case i think we would have something like uh, another maybe a user proxy to pass in this concept to the uh, maybe to the critique first and then it will give suggestions for for placements and and, and something before even for, for the compo for the composer uh, something like that uh, I, I don't know but uh because in the first place uh for the compo for the image composition agent to work it has to get something let's say you have to pass it like maybe a text and then maybe llm can interpret that into a configuration uh, as we yeah, said the, compo the, composer, the, the composer starts first and just has to do and so it's the composer that tries to synthesize the frame right so whether it uses the the concept or not or the concept is used as evaluation whether you know in the evaluation if the concept is used is to say you know how are we achieving but normally the concept one is a frame concept and the other one is of course the combination of frames so you might want to say like am i achieving that concept you can use it in the evaluation or just the frame concept you might just give it also in the composer so i would say like for now the composer normally the concepts are used to generate the assets as well you have to know that and then on top of that it also helps to tie together you know the you know for example okay lego you know it, it gives you a certain idea for example on a background of like lego whatever city that you have uh 
a con something something happening you know now this already tells you the, the composer what should be the order in terms of the z order which means the background comes that and then these assets you select already in that frame so the concept is used actually first by the composer to, to help it and later is also whether the composition is achieving the desired goal in the evaluation so yeah hillary okay so that will mean that i i sh i also have to have a uh, an LLM on the other side of Composer that will interpret uh, things like that, uh, like um, how we want to have the frame, how you want to have a frame. Or yeah, so we, uh, we are yeah. talking. So you have to know we are talking now in one algorithm type, which is we are using LLMs. In that sense, yes. You may have another. We have another. Yeah. Okay. So like. Um, we, we could have so we could have like okay the composer in this case what i thought is uh it has an llm that interprets an, an input that is that is a, a concept and then from that it will generate maybe configuration and then run different functions like resizing him resizing locating and placing images together that's what i thought so it means you'll have a composer with llm and then a critique with llm um so is that approach that yeah so again you know yes so we are talking in as the one algorithm the composer also uses the llm to compose right that means it it gives it a description and uh, of the assets whatever in and it asks the llm to generate like what to do, right? So that is one algorithm. The other algorithm is, as we say, it's just the composer is just a certain template. So in that sense, you, you may not use at all the concept. You only just use some rules. So yes, in the in the case, the the composer algorithm or the algorithm that you are using for the composer is LLM. Yes, you have to do that. You have to tell it what are each, what are the concepts, and it should suggest in a certain output. So that means what operations to do in each asset and what movements, what to place. And so you're basically asking it to give you something so that within that LLM response, you should be able to then to compose, right? So systematically, if it is a function to apply, for example, I don't know, edit something, resize something, you do that. If it is, you know, moving the object to a location that you do that, something like that. So in the LLM context, that's the case. Yeah. Okay. Um, so because uh, I didn't think that there's there's a way that you cannot use LLM because if you build, let's say if you build now a front end for this one, you won't pass in the to the template. Let you're saying uh, composition. We can have a template instead of LLM, but for a template, you have to pass in configurations like the, the image position with respective to another to make a frame. But for that, you'll have to identify on yourself, for yourself, or alternatively, you can pass in what I thought now is, it will be tricky. So you, I thought you could use an LM, you tell it, okay, I want this story, and then it starts with one frame. Yeah, true. So it, trying simple and, and just making sure that, you know, uh, that is good. So it's almost always, as we said, if you use, if you don't apply anything on the LLM, you save cost, but also sometimes you see how much, you know, how much can be done by outside that. So you could be ambitious to train a composer to be, I don't know, a certain deep learning model itself, but we're not suggesting that now because you don't have time as well and we don't, you don't have data more, more than that. But you could, I think there are, there can be templates, you know, by digitizing the spaces, you know, just only first you are supporting, as I said, only locations so that things are not overlapped. You assume the assets are already good level in terms of edit. All you need is now arrangement. So in that sense, you can have a template that works, but if you don't, you can just use the, yeah. If you want to create a more general one, you can use, um, you can use the LLM. So what you write is, is good. 
Yeah, Johannes, was is your answer answered? Is your question answered? So I'm still uh, confused about the composition part uh, because uh, maybe before that, let me ask a uh, Hilary question. Uh, you say that we have to take the take a stand, uh, maybe generate. Is that, is it not the generation? And uh, in terms of this uh, project, uh, we are not doing uh, any generation. Maybe is my question clear? Can I can I answer? Okay, like what I meant is yeah, like you have a function even even using a template that the template takes in like uh, I don't know what I can say, but if we have to get something from a critique to the composer composer, the critique normally like I thought it would pass in the configurations like for placing the images in a certain order to make it optimal, but that case now it in this case the composer agent will be will be executing functions like these functions are your you have yours for pillow like you the way you merging the merging the frames or positioning them each other to each other and if that if the composition agent does that for you to start like the first time you are going to generate that I think you I what I meant is you can have an assistant to you you give the concept and it starts with a a suggestion with the parameters to execute. It calls a function with those parameters and then it will pass that to the critique. The critique will now pass it to the composition. Composition generates now a config for that to execute on the functions to resize images and so on. That that's what I thought. Like, uh, okay, okay, okay. For example, if you have a front end, uh, the user you, you are suggesting the user will input a concept, not uh, uh, each component like the logo or something like that. No, in addition to that, uh, in addition to the assets, you input your concept on how on how you want. Yeah, you input the concept and the and the and and the assets and then the the first the composition agent to separate that to to configurations and execute a function or uh, or maybe take it to a an a worker who, uh, calling it to telling it to execute the functions to to execute those functions of um the composition like that's what i thought uh on the high level like um when the entire application is integrated okay i think i understand uh, your point but what confused me is uh what you're saying is in the scope of this project yeah uh, but i understand what you say Oh yes, but how could we relate uh, this course to Hilary and all of us? How can we like match the asset uh, folders and the concept, the concepts? The, the assets order and the concepts. I mean, so the concept. So if you understand what a concept, the concept just tells if you were to see it. If I give you as a human, if I give you, that's what I want to do. Like the concept I want, you know, like someone is trying to sketch something and they did something, you know, they, they wanted to draw a house and they had a few lines here and there, some horizontal, some vertical. And your, the question is, uh, did the person achieve the, the concept? Did they draw a house? And knowing that you have a knowledge what a house looks like, you would say then, okay, no, uh, maybe just they should move the lines like that because lying like that. So and then you give. So that's that's clear. It's just the relationship between, you know, what it is being doing. The the, the basically the composer is drawing, more or less, and the concept is the goal you want to achieve, and the critic is using 
first what a house is the knowledge base and second is what you know how things are for example lines are overlapping no just you can't overlap line even if it's a house but you know it's not good i haven't seen it anywhere like that so like that so it's the, the relationship between the knowledge base the composer and the critic is that is that is that clear around uh no actually like i mean like my question is uh we have those assets like for example for building a house like there are particle of houses like uh like uh, we have those images that the, uh, the the company wants to advertise in the asset folder right so we want to we want to build that ad frame in a, in a sense of that concept like the the yeah. other guys the creative guys like they have this mind and it's the it's our task to compose uh, those to 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 compose those images in to a, achieve in, in that, the you have to know there are million ways of achieving that story okay. right in a way there isn't one you know if i if i tell you a house i didn't tell you if it's a building i didn't tell you if it is uh, um you know and uh, the setting for example and I don't know in a rural area or maybe in a town you know there are me the creativity is the, the designer the creative designer has that creative they, you know uh, ability or freedom so all the analyzer would do is of course just whether the you know because there are so much ways of doing the same thing it is saying yeah you know the first level is whether it's achieved the story and not only the story and have the best practices so you know so the story might be achieved but i don't know some things don't really make sense so it the first the critic is doing that so it, it, you have to assume there's many ways of doing it so and that's you know placement even the positions like one after the other left or right some things don't make sense um but even if for when you evaluate the story yeah, the person have placed you don't have any issue yes there is a, a city and inside the logo city for example there are cranes and there are cars but you might be just putting you know cars on the crane and you know you might feel like that's really creative that you might say that's bad does that does that give a, an idea yes yes totally does and i have like uh, one question the last question yeah. like have these assets folder they are in i think in a gui folders and how do we map those to the concept file or should we just rearrange those asset folders so, in a uh, way that uh, exists yeah so i mean you might just as long as you you know you describe the assets what they are you know from the file name and what's inside them and what it defines you can use earlier as we said yolo and others to identify and and have like items in them so you can describe them right so if you are just now let's talk llm just because we are a lot more focused there in that case you really describe what the logo what is it about what it contains the colors whatever so whatever you can get so the metadata of the data you can describe and using that's where the computer vision comes in and even for that if you want you can use the uh, you know the llm based image analysis to describe the image for you and so now you have the asset but not only the asset you have the metadata of the asset and then you ask you know you have algorithms to manipulate it's, it's making sense so like uh, we'll use those assets uh, and we will we will construct uh, i think we will understand first we will use computer vision to understand those, those yes. assets generate the metadata yes. then we'll use our critic agent to evaluate and uh, give feedback so we can improve it in a beautiful way yeah, yeah. wonderful i think i think the questions were all great really thank you for those who ask and i i believe that we have improved in terms of asking I mean, some people still I may not have heard, but they are consistently here. It means they are listening and they are, in, you know, hopefully they are also asking when I'm not there. 
So yeah, it, you know, this is the last week. It's also the most probably complex um, challenge, um, utilizing all your power so far you have built. So Johannes. Okay. Uh uh, the first one is, I think I have two questions. Uh, I think the uh, Hilary answered the first question, but I just want a confirmation. So after the yeah. composite function compose our image and the critic gave it feedback, uh, it should return as the position, right? Because if it returns like the logo should be uh, like a text, our composite function won't understand that. So our critic uh, should return it as the position is that correct yes so everything every, everything should be written in the sense of you know things that you can manipulate right so that means with a python code you should read the positions and place that there right so you should have the asset name so that means you can load it and place it there and the bounding box as well the size f you want so if you support just resizing plus positioning for example that's one support if you so that means your functions will will take into the position and and the asset and place it there and if it requires resizing then it resizes as well so that you have a python function to operate that so yes every communication should be with with you know the resizing items how to resize as well as uh the positions where to place so the language should be you know the communication between the critic and and the Composer should be that, and the composer should also write in that way, like in in, in some sense, so that the, the functions that are called by the composer should do exactly because they don't know they are not LLM. They just have to do with actual parameters that can be interpreted in Python. Okay, and uh, this question, uh, anyone can answer this one. I'm still uh, uh, don't understand how we can implement the composite function or how we can write the composite, the composite function maybe anyone can explain to me like how the structure should be yeah. so because i have to drop quickly but this is an excellent question can i recommend that you just type it also in slack and this could be whatever tools people have found you know less you know references or you know that that you can discuss there and it's also just it becomes concrete because yeah some people might be wondering but overall thank you so much and yes you know good luck and i i hope that you are gonna have yeah you're gonna enjoy this last phase of you know, dealing with images and computer vision and lines together as one plus of course just modularity of your code and everything so it, it, it is interesting so will will let you know um, extensions but hopefully that should be fine unless there are clashes with any programs in the next week but um it's mostly was intended for your break if i'm not mistaken or some some that so it we were we're gonna be taking some time maybe from your so but we might be extending until wednesday wednesday could be the submission and um but yeah good luck thank you bye everyone Thank you, everyone. So have a good day.